day of a lot of note taking. Okay, you're going to do uh, a lot of cutting and exploring some shapes. I'm going to give you some hardware shapes that you have to cut and work with. All right. So. Yeah. No, not right now. You have to all those things such as notebooks. Please always get it from Miss Carolina because I don't have. I don't have any more. I never get any new ones. All right, guys. So today we're going to start exploring how to deal with the area of further quadrilaterals past the rectangle and the square. Uh, I am expecting, so today you can put this in the title, areas of quadrilaterals. <coughs> so before we move on to do that, I'd like to discuss briefly uh, how the triangle is related to the rectangle. Because who knows what is the equation of a, of a triangle? Uh, base times height divided by two. Base times height divided by two. So in a way, it looks like we were dealing with a rectangle because a rectangle is base divided by height, yeah? And if we divided that by two, that implies that the triangle is half a rectangle. Guillermo. So for that, I would like to bring up this little geogebra. Let me get it from the computer. It's too high up. So here we have uh, a little rectangle that contains a triangle inside. Yeah? Everybody? Now, as you can see, the base of the shape, the base of the shape, which is the base of the shape coincides with the base of the rectangle. Now, I don't know if you did this last year, but you could have done any kind of triangle and you could have worked with it so you could turn it into a rectangle. So in this case that I am going to, to try to review with you very quickly, we have that this line that is perpendicular, 90 degrees, with the base, comes out to be what we call the height of the rectangle. And we have the base. But then we divide it by two. So where is the explanation of why we are dividing by two in this triangle that we're looking at? Anybody? Yeah, go ahead, Karen. Yeah. That is really easy to see in a situation like this where my triangle is this one here. Very clear, very clean, that you can see that this triangle and that triangle are the same. But how do we adapt a situation like this one where we have an acute triangle and we are going to try to turn it into a rectangle? How do we justify that the triangle is half of the rectangle? Because if you add a second triangle, it would be the capture Yeah. Exactly, so if we talk about this triangle here, and we cut it and flip it, it will fit right here. Being that this line, the 90 degrees, is gonna make for a 90 degree here between those two angles. Yeah? Everybody? Are we all in the same page? Okay. Now, for the other triangle, it's a similar situation. This part that I'm briefly gonna color, if we cut it and double it, it will fit perfectly here. So that's where the dividing by two comes from. Now, the rectangle and the square behave in a similar way, base and height. But today, the point of the class is to try to understand how the other quadrilaterals work. So let's begin, or let's continue with making a list of the quadrilaterals that we know. So who has? Let's begin by making a list. Okay, so what 
quadrilaterals do we know? Go ahead, tell us. A square. Everybody knows the area of the square, right? Yes. How is a square like? All sides are congruent. How, what happens with the angles? They're all 90. Okay, what happens? So this one, we normally call it side and side since they're the same number. And when we find the area, we multiply side by side. Okay, then we have a rectangle. Here we have a rectangle. I know it's called rectangle because it has it makes right angles. And we know that one of the lengths is longer than the other. For convention, I like to call the long side the length, and I like to call the short side the width. And what is the area for a rectangle, guys?
everybody their, uh, their set.
way, uh, making it a parallelogram, because that will require that you guys found this height. So it is a much easier way to work out the kite and the rounds. So the first thing that I wanted everybody to think about was that we have these lines inside the shape that are called diagonals. Yeah. This is called diagonal one, it doesn't matter which one is which. And the other one, the other one, this line is, let's call it diagonal two. So I find after about five minutes of people attempting to deal with it as a parallelogram, I noticed that people started cutting it down by the diagonal. And when they rearranged it, they basically took this triangle here and basically flipped it, turned it around, and made it land right here. That's what happened with most of you. The same story happened with this part. You cut it out and made a big turn all around on this point. And when we were done, we had this. So, I'm gonna color that part just in purple. I'm gonna put these notes on the website, by the way. Okay, so this is the rectangle that we turn it in. Hello, is? Yeah? All right, so, what is the length the long side of that rectangle. Diagonal. It's a still diagonal too. So we're gonna use that for the rectangle. And what happened with the diagonal one? Exactly. Diagonal one went from being a whole diagonal one to being half of it. So the equation, and that's basically the kind of the kind of work I want you to do. The equation for the rhombus is. So you write rhombus area. We have diagonal 1 divided by 2, diagonal 1 divided by 2, times diagonal 2. Now, can I write this as this and not have a problem? Make two imaginary numbers. Yeah. Let's say this is six and three. Oh, no, six, oh. Yeah, let's do six and three. So, if this is six divided by two, it turns into three. Times another three, nine. Let's do it here. If this is six and this one is three. 18 divided by two. Exactly, 18 divided by two makes nine again. So you can use either of these two equations. Please make a good note of this. <laughs> Any questions about this? Everybody sees this with clarity? Show me with your thumb up if you really get it. Or if it's confusing, show me medium of the way. And if you don't understand what we're doing, all the way down. Spencer, you're good with this? Mm -hmm. You're good? With the, yeah, you have to write the equation. Diagonal one times diagonal two divided by two. You guys like this? All good? You were doing a little like this, but not anymore? It doesn't matter. Up to you. You, you basically pick the two diagonals and divide by two. It doesn't matter which one is which. Right here, Mimo. Diagonal one times diagonal two divided by two. Yes, they both work. Now, to you guys, it's more logical to look at the first version. Yeah? Are you doing this over here? Okay. Let's move on to the kite that has a similar behavior. So for the kite, that kind of looks like this, we figure that our diagonals, they cut into 90 degrees in a very nice way. And basically, we ended up in a similar situation as before, with this being diagonal one. This is diagonal one, and this will be, yeah, this is such a nice drawing. I am artistic today, guys. 
Okay, so, again, if I cut out this part and I do a flippy flippy based on this corner, we will have, so, uh, we will have this side ma matchy right here or half a diagonal. So diagonal one divided by two. And the height is still diagonal. Diagonal, and that's it. So the same equation for both. Diagonal one times diagonal two divided by two. Well, all right guys, now it's your time to do a little work. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a packet that you're going to work on today during this class and next Friday will be class, got okay? it? So basically I only want the first page for homework, both sides, all right? Now in the back, in the back we have also trapezoids. I don't want you to work on the trapezoids because we will discuss them next class, okay? I think we did enough with the parallelogram, the rhombus, and All right, guys, listen up. Everybody listening? Urrutia, last track, please sit down. Hey, guys, thank you. Thank you, Ruth, for listening to your teacher. Good work. Good work at keeping quiet at the right time. Okay, I am. Uh, I told you already that you guys are gonna be on your own on Friday, so uh, you're gonna come to this classroom and you're gonna. I'm gonna leave instructions that you go to the website and you guys are going to work on uh, understanding why the area of the trapezoid works because this is not about the just the equation, but we also need to know why does it work. So I'm going to leave you one of those videos uh, that explain why that happens. But since you guys, since I'm not going to be here, I'm going to leave you with the equation. Okay? So here we go. The trapezoid also has a height. I am going to explain why this works on Monday. But I'm going to leave you a video that explains it. Okay? So. We're going to call one of the parallel lines base 1. And we're going to call the other one base 2. You know they are different sides, different lengths. <coughs> you know they are different lengths. So what we're going to do is add them together to get the average. So add them together and divide by 2. G. G, mija, pay attention. So yeah, we're going to... At B1 plus B2 and divided by 2 to get the average. So as you can see, we are going to find a length that is in between this side and that side and multiply it <coughs> by the height. This is the area of a trapezoid. The justification will come up tomorrow. I mean Friday, okay? Area of the trapezoid. So you can work on that, on those problems on the first page. Yeah, so the first paper, guys, this is what you're going to do on Friday. You arrive, read my instructions, work on the second paper, and work in an additional page that includes all the shapes combined. Yeah. Okay, Wednesday. Ah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Wednesday in a week. Thank you for reminding me. You know, it's the most exciting thing that we can think about the vacation, and I'm not even remembering. What do you think? What do you think? Huh? Okay, listen up. Okay, I'm gonna give you one of those exit tickets where you are gonna 
basically quickly mark what is the area of the three shapes I'm giving you. And once you finish this, you can put it on a pile on my desk and then you can leave. Okay. So today, today we gather all the equations of all the common quadrilaterals and we already know how to do the area of a triangle. So the trapezoid, even though it hasn't been explained, you guys are going to be able to understand why it works tomorrow. We're going to leave a video uh, with a link so you can go in there and hear my voice explaining this. No, just a quick explanation. Why is it work? So just show your work in Thank you. Uh, all the trash goes to the trash. All the trash goes to the trash. 